wearing all black. Aloha. I'm here with JC and Jeff. <laughs> we ain't no time for school today. Getting bombs. Hey, watch this punch cut lobby. Replace your marshals with cart girls. They're better looking. They're serving drinks. Got to hit bombs off the tee. Phil talking about a guy taking a shit in the cut. Mahalo. That's what we did fireside with Phil. Fire the stick. Hit. All right. Fire. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, I wasn't feeling that particular hat, so switch to the single palm. Yeah. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Aloha Press Podcast and YouTube show. My name is JC. Today, I am solo. Unfortunately, uh, Jeff couldn't make it today, so I decided to step in and uh, for whatever reason, host a podcast by myself, which is really awkward. It's uh, it's the most awkward. I'm sitting in my office. I've got no pictures or anything around. Um, I'm barely unpacked, I mean, for the most part. But uh, golf is here, and you can't miss an opportunity to do a podcast, especially before the reopening of golf. I mean, shit, three weeks ago, we were, we were letting people punch each other in, in Florida, and now we had the match, and then we had some other thing with Ricky Fowler and DJ and... Rory and Wolf, I don't know, the guy with a weird twin, but I just had to jump on and do a podcast, so um, bear with me, I'm probably going to chop this thing up so it uh, doesn't sound horrible, I actually recorded an entire podcast by myself and decided that it was like the most monotone, boring shit I've absolutely ever listened to, and I'm not a big fan of listening to myself, he said, Thank you for joining me. This is the Aloha Press Podcast and YouTube show. I appreciate you guys subscribing, downloading, taking your neighbor's phone, and hitting subscribe. Please, we need to grow. But uh, on top of the podcast and YouTube show, I decided when we moved out here to Georgia that I had some extra time on my hands. I was going to put together a email newsletter, which if you're listening to this, you probably subscribe to the email newsletter. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I hopefully you enjoyed the uh, the email. I'm trying to keep it light. Uh, some fun facts about golf, uh, the professional tours, and uh, you know, I don't know, probably mix in some weird shit uh, at, at times. But excuse me, um, it's uh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be different. I used to write for a living, and that particular writing was a little bit more. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say important. But it had to be to the point. And with this style of writing with the email newsletter, I'm able to kind of let loose and say whatever the hell I want because who's going to fire me? Gmail? MailChimp? Yahoo? Hotmail? I saw some Hotmails on there. That's old school. Some MSN Messenger days. I see, I see what we're working with. Um, so again, really appreciate you guys listening, downloading, and subscribing to the uh, the newsletter. So, with that being said, let's get into the podcast. Holy shit! Welcome, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. I changed hats. Figured I might want to go with the Aloha Press visor. Get suntan. This week, Colonial, okay, Fort Worth, Texas, reopened up the golf course. Said, hey, if we're gonna have a PGA Tour event, why not here? Why not Texas, the Lone Star State, in the middle of the country? Everyone can congregate and hopefully not get COVID-19, right? Defending champ, Kevin Na. Dude is a freaking veteran on the tour. I mean, he's been playing golf there on the PGA Tour for years. 14, 16 years, I have no idea. But the dude's always around. He's always a good pick, not to win in majors, but Short course at 7,200 yards at Colonial. He pulled it off last year. And not just in normal fashion, he beat some dudes. I mean, it was also after the PGA Championship. They might have been a little bit worn out, but he was energized. He was there, ready to go, and he won by four shots. The dude is entertaining. If it's his yips, which I can relate to, or it's his putting, which he gladly walks in, which by the way, it's impressive. I like it. I might start doing it. It's just awkward when you walk in, miss putts. When you miss a putt and you walked it in and you're pointing like Tiger or Kevin Na does, does it get awkward afterwards? 
Do you do the quick like, that was good, right? This tournament is, it's a full field event. This is, I don't want to say a major or a player's championship. It's probably one of the biggest events this year. Not only for golf in general, but things are going to be opening up here soon. And this is a great step forward, bringing golf back. Bringing the golf back in a way that's going to be safe. Not only for the viewers, for the for the for the tour players, which is the product I get, for the staff, for the people who put on the production to present golf. Golf affects not just the tour players, and I know we occasionally get excited about tour players. Patrick Reed, I'm watching you. But the thing about it is, when a golf tournament comes into town, like a relatively small town like Fort Worth, which is next to Dallas, which by the way I didn't know, um, it brings jobs, it brings money, it brings things that is needed to substantiate that, that economy. And it gives volunteers, people, fuck, I mean, you go to a golf tournament and you need someone to park some asshole selling his lawn for you to pull up here in your motorhome. Which, by the way, it's who are players. Some of them ride in private jets. I'm assuming Southwest still flies to Fort Worth. But then you got Bubba Watson pulling up in the RV. I mean, Christmas vacation. I mean, Uncle Eddie, are you here? Is he showing up in white shoes? Did he bring Christmas presents? Where is he parking that damn thing? Is he staying at a campground? At a KOA? Are the Boy Scouts in town? These are questions that I need answered, okay? And one, if he's taking a number two, and he's taking a number two in his RV, where's he dumping that waste? Is he dumping it down the drain? Is he lighting a fire? I mean, that shit's toxic. I mean, talk about COVID-19, you probably don't want hepatitis either. So Bubba, do me a favor, okay? Give me a picture with the entire RV. I don't want to see the shit underneath the RV. I want to see the RV. Is that a bumper pole? Is that a fifth wheel? Is that a diesel pusher? We working with a Winnebago? Cab over camper? Tent trailer? Probably not a tent trailer. But Bubba, give me an instant insight, okay? Selfie stick, driving down the road. How you getting there? What's your fuel mileage? What is that thing loaded down with, okay? How many golf balls do you have in that rig? And are you playing Titleist? I don't know, are you back with Volvic? It's been a long time since I've seen you. But, moving on, Colonial. Big, big, big field, okay? You've got it stacked with four sets of groups, which is like a major event. I mean, holy shit, you've got Rory, which by the way is number one in the world. Two, you got Brooks Kepka, okay? Who has been shaky, because I mean, it's freaking knee. I mean, he was pretty much entertaining us all, besides Tiger winning the Masters for the last couple of years. And then you got John Rahm, this young buck who's, I don't want to say has a screw loose, but um, if he had PXG irons, he might have like eight screws loose. Cause this guy will either shank one or pretty much end up in the top five or top 10 his whole career. Dude's a stud. And if he wins this week and Rory comes in third, He's going to take over the number one spot. He's number one a major, which I kind of have a problem with, but it's an unbelievable group. Now moving on, you got Phil, okay? Let me check my notes. Playing with Kevin Na and Gary Woodland. I would love to hear the discussions in that group. Kevin, shut up. Gary, how did it feel winning the US Open? Phil, fuck you, Gary, okay? I've been trying to win that goddamn thing for fucking 25 fucking years. And you just show up, win your first fucking major, playing Wilson fucking golf clubs? What are you, fucking eight? I mean, Wilson, whew. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to check you guys out, but holy shit, Gary wouldn't let me at Pebble Beach. Fuck, I don't wanna brag, but, I don't wanna brag, but fuck, I was there. That thing was fucking legit. I mean, the fairways were like, I don't know, as skinny as some 
some grooming you might do with the manscaper. I have no fucking clue, but listen, are you talking all this shit to Phil? Because good God, Phil, during that match, you were entertaining, you were informative, but at the same time, you're that guy in the group that's just a bit too informative, okay? I don't give a shit what grain is, okay? I don't care how much skid the ball's gonna have with the little rainwater on it. A couple key groups that I have to highlight. And the PJ Tour is, it's got his, I, I wanna say they got their Lady Wood out, okay? And the reason why I say that is because the sheer fact that they put Ricky Fowler, Jordan Speed, and Justin Thomas together. The three dudes that were just country club boys, I mean, the boys club, because they are, at times, a bit fill in the blank, okay? Ricky, I get it, you're a halfway decent golfer. Jordan Spieth, you went on a pretty good run and won some majors. You're a stud. Not lately. JT, step it up, man, because if not, they're going to put you in the booth. It was impressive. So... Looking forward to a couple groups there. Um, it's going to be different. It's going to be weird. Uh, the media, I've been told, uh, the, co the, the coverage, it's all been limited. Uh, the staff is limited. There is no fans. There's no grandstands. This is a, I don't want to say a Sunday afternoon, but it's going to feel like a Sunday afternoon playing with the boys in a, you know, maybe a best ball tournament that you might be playing this summer. It's going to be very enjoyable and you got to keep it on the map i mean this course is not exactly the widest thing in the world and it's you know sitting on a nice river that it will swallow up some golf balls and it's not exactly the easiest golf course in the world it might be short but or there's some stretch of golf holes that will legitimately kick everyone's ass now is it going to be playing to the necessary level of the pga tour i have no clue i've heard great things about scores i heard that they can go low I heard that it can go not so low. We'll see. But it's going to be an entertaining product. I don't know how it's going to look on TV. It's going to be weird. It's going to be like, I don't know, the UFC when people are punching each other and talking to their, their team or their group or their, I don't know what you call a UFC caddy, but, um, you know, the guy that fixes your face. But it's going to be weird. It's going to be weird seeing these guys not have the ability to walk up and go where's my golf ball and they're like it hit that tree bounce off that lady it's on that dude's shoe and he goes all right i'm gonna need to take a drop like there's gonna be some limited exposure and limited interaction and i mean shot tracer's not gonna be able to tell you where your freaking golf ball is on the, on the course like i just want an entertaining product that i can hopefully not take a sunday nap to i want it to be exciting i want it to be back I want golf to be punching people in the face. As golf is coming back, these guys have been long laid off. Is there anything that's gonna be, I don't know, different about them? Did someone get a nose piercing? Did someone not get a haircut? Could they find a barber? I couldn't, I had to shave my head. Ugh. But what are these guys gonna look like? Patrick Reed. Did you put on some LBs? I think you did. Or maybe you go to the gym. Maybe you got skinny like Phil, and now you're not going to be able to play well. We'll see. But it's going to be entertaining content, and it's going to be some entertaining things that we're going to be shoving down your throat in our golf newsletter. Now, if you sign up for the golf newsletter, a couple things. One, I don't know anything about golf newsletters. Two, I don't know how to send a golf newsletter without going into your spam file. Now, I've been explaining, like, there's different like things that you can do to make sure that the file goes in the right file where people will get the email that they sign up to. I have no clue. If you know how to do that, can you let me know? Like legitimately, I have no clue. Like I sent the email to myself and it was sent to my junk file and I don't know why I sent it to myself. Like me sending an email to myself, it went in the, bad file. I need it to be in the good file. So if anyone knows how to do that, please reach out. I greatly appreciate it. Now, moving on. The golf tournament. 
It's gonna be entertaining content. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the finish that we're gonna see on Sunday. I don't know how they're gonna cover it, but I'm excited about the groups on Thursday and Friday. I'm, I've am i been paying for my subscription to PGA Tour Live. Will I get a refund my money? I have no clue. I hope not, so maybe, I don't know. Are they, are they hurting for cash? Is the PGA Tour hurting for cash? I have no clue. But they sure were excited about starting golf, which rightfully so. I moved from fucking California to Georgia to cover golf. There's been no golf. It's been really awkward. Who's going to win? Who do you have scheduled to win this golf tournament? It's a short course. 7,000 yards. 7,200 yards maybe. Somewhere in there. Short in PJ Tour's eyes. Because I played 7,200 yards. Not good, not good. Lots, high, high, high scores, high scores. But who's gonna take the victory? I mean, you've got guys who like Kevin Na, uh, Justin Rose, Kevin Kisner, Jordan Spieth, I can't remember the other guy's name, who have won, who have kicked some butt here, who have taken down this Colonial, this private golf course, which by the way, you can't even get in. They have to invite you to be a member. Do you know anyone? I'd love to join. Like, hook someone up. It's a golf business. It's a golf media business. Now, who do you have winning this golf tournament? In my opinion, it's going to be someone who took some time off, who had been playing well in the beginning of the season, who had some momentum coming through, and I mentioned him earlier in the podcast or YouTube show. I think it's going to be John Rahm. I mean, dude doesn't stop playing golf. He's in unbelievable shape, kind of. Hits it a mile. It's dead straight. He's angry as shit. I feel like he's going to come out and be angry and try and win this damn thing. I think he wants the world number one spot. He's not out running around playing PGA Tour's puppet. I think he's been practicing some golf, keeping things fine-tuned. Now, on the other side of it, someone is not a long ball hitter that I would consider taking, who I'd like to have a drink with, who I'd like to play golf with, dude's a stud, Kevin Kisner. I mean, he's got recent history. He's been playing well throughout this year. I think he might have a chance. But when it comes down to those two guys, I'm taking John Rom. Dude wants it. He's been fighting. He's a crazy Spaniard, and I give him credit. He's really good at golf. I just hope he doesn't make the same mistakes he has in the past and just executes. So, as strong as this field is, with the grouping that he's been placed with, the drama that's going to unfold, I think he might be up on top. Or he might be, I don't know. Maybe he got bigger. Maybe he got worse at golf. Maybe his golf swing's even shorter. We'll see. Moving on. Enough with the PGA Tour. I mean, these prima donnas. I mean, come on. Do they really, really need the money? Really? I knew who does need the money. Car girls, okay? A little lesson. I was playing out my local club, my new local club, not our old home course, Castle Oaks. Which, by the way, I miss. I miss the Poana Greens. I know you probably can't even imagine that, but I do miss them. I miss the excuse to be like, huh, they're a little bumpy. But when it comes down to it, the people who really need some money these days are the people that are in the service industry who are helping us out, specifically on the golf course. So sure enough, cart girl comes up. We've had a few on the show. Do you want anything to drink? I go, sure. Do you have Pepsi? Don't order a Pepsi. So I order a Coke. I tune in and get a Coke. She goes, it's $2.50. That's a lot of money for a Coke, but here's $5. She pulls out her Crown Royal, little purple bag, and I'm like, ah, maybe she's got a drink. Maybe she's getting my change. I have no idea. 
She looks at me and goes, "Hun." She didn't say it like that. She's got an accent, and I don't want to intimidate it or not intimidate uh, impersonate it because it it just ought, maybe I will. Okay, here it goes. I got no jangles. And I'm thinking in my head. Did I hear that right? I ain't got no jangles. What? Sir, you gave me a five dollar bill and I ain't got no jangles. I ain't got no jangles. I've been patiently waiting for this, whatever this lady saying to me, and I'm like, am I drunk? No, I don't drink anymore. Well, occasional glass of wine. What'd she say? I look at my playing partner. He looks at her and goes, he's not from here. Oh. You know, jangles, change. I ain't got no change. I'm like, change for what? It's like your Coke. Oh, we're still talking about money. Oh shit, jangles, change. Fuck me, what? I'm from California. I've got a ninth grade reading level. Or more like fourth grade, but who the fuck says jangles? I thought she was talking about a fucking store. A disease or cocktail, I don't know. Now listen, ma'am. I don't know what you just said. I'm assuming you know more than I do. I've never heard that term. But, keep the jangles, okay? Keep the jangles. I really appreciate you sitting down, listening, watching, enjoying, hopefully, some enlightening, lighthearted content in regards to golf coming back. If you have a gambling problem, you're probably my big listener. Because you're excited about things being back. And I understand that. I really appreciate the download, the listen. Again, please steal your neighbor's phone and subscribe. Not only on the YouTube show, but also the Low Hour Press podcast. If you're listening to it, congratulations. Thank you. Really appreciate it. But the thing that I wanted to, to do, uh, I was unpacking uh, some boxes this weekend and came across... Uh, some merchandise that I had 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 brought along and um, decided I want I want to give away a hat. And the one thing that I, I really appreciate is you guys sharing all the content. And uh, the one thing that I want to grow besides the podcast and YouTube show is also the the email newsletter. So uh, do me a favor if you haven't subscribed to the email newsletter, go to the press dot com and go to the homepage and just input your first name and your email, hit send, you'll get a cool little notification, and then on Mondays and Thursdays, check your junk file and resp respond to the email. Uh, kind of helps apparently the algorithm to, to no longer go to your, your, your junk trash file, stuff over there. Um, if you do, okay, if you, even if you already have subscribed, I wanted to, uh, to give away a hat, um, a new Aloha Press hat, uh, one of our new trucker hats that's not even on the website yet. Uh, you can't even get it. Um, so I wanted to give away a hat. Uh, all you have to do is subscribe to the newsletter and share the newsletter. Um, super easy. All you have to do is just hit share, hit the little forward button. And if you share it and we get a new subscriber, I will put you into the contest to win the, to the hat when this hat. this see it's brand new super nice for uh, tuning in and uh, enjoying this kind of rant uh, hopefully uh, my co-host Jeff will be back uh, next week and we'll be able to record a podcast from the West Coast to the East Coast and we will catch you then in the meantime questions comments concerns if you want to advertise on the podcast let me know at JC um, at 
We will all press dot com. All right. Cheers, guys. Have a great night. Here with JC and Jeff. <laughs> we ain't no time for school today. Hitting balls. Hey, watch this punch cut Broadway. Replace your Marshall with Cart Girl. They're better looking. They're serving drinks. Got to hit bombs off the tee. Phil talking about a guy taking shit in the cut. Mahalo. That's what we did in Fireside with Phil. Fire the stick. Hit bomb and attack the pin.